Welcome to a presentation of five interwoven economies, subsistence, gift, exchange, planned, and theft. A simplified educational model about socioeconomics for understanding 21st century trends. There can be considered to be three levels of economic reality. There's what really is, there are decision makers, and there are models. Examples of what really is are things like dirt, trees, oceans, people, wire, thermostats, software, and papers. Examples of decision makers are people, thermostats, computers, robots, and bureaucracies. Examples of models that decision makers use are things like supply-side economics, natural capitalism, theories about human motivation, and so on. The rest of this presentation explores a model to help people understand what possible changes lie ahead. There have always been five interwoven economies. The balance between them shifts with technological changes and cultural changes. A subsistence economy, a gift economy, a planned economy, an exchange economy, and a theft or conquest economy. When someone says there's some lovely berries over here, they're generally talking in terms of a subsistence economy. When someone talks about having some meat that's going to spoil and how they should share it and other people might share it later. They're talking about a gift economy. When people decide how to plan a longhouse or a building together that they'll all share, that's like a planned economy. When people decide to exchange things or barter things, that's an exchange economy. When people take things, that's a theft economy. In the five types of economies, there are different flows of goods, different levels of happiness in different people, and different levels of coercion. In a subsistence economy, people produce for themselves when they want to. As long as they can do that and they have appropriate expectations, they may be happy. In a gift economy, people give something they have or have made to somebody else, and the transaction is voluntary. In a theft economy, someone coerces someone else to give them something and generally that person is unhappy but the person who gets the thing may be happy in an exchange economy voluntary exchanges happen where both people presumably are happy however people may be left out who have nothing to exchange and they might they might even starve in the middle of plenty in a planned economy people are often coerced or in some other way prodded or rewarded but they may still be happy if the planning is done well Let's think about how we can understand headlines in the press and on the internet in terms of these five economies. If you see something about how to grow your own organic vegetables for frugal sustainability, what kind of economy is that? If you see a comment about Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia that anyone can edit, what kind of economy is that? If you see an advertisement to buy a Mac for college, what's that about? If you see that ministers of parliament order a review of a high-speed rail plan that's expensive, what about that? Or if you learn about the car theft capital of the USA, what's that about? Remember what I said at the start. This is a simplified model. It's intended for educational purposes. There are complexities and gray areas that aren't covered by it. The economies are interwoven, so interactions can happen across different economies. For example, a retailer might give a gift to a local nonprofit because they've talked with local officials. And the nonprofit may be putting in an organic garden, and the retailer might get goodwill and advertising out of it and reduce a shoplifting problem. That's something that might span all the different types of economies. Or a community might plan its own local subsistence. And is that planning or is that subsistence? So there's gray areas. The five economies model is intended to be useful, not a complete perfect theory. 
Let's look at some examples of overlap. Planning can be done by a government using taxes, subsidies, and regulations that affect the market and that may account for externalities. An example of an externality would be a coal plant that may produce cheap electricity in the marketplace but may also produce a lot of pollution that causes other people health costs and these may be people who don't benefit from the cheap electricity. The market economy can be softened by a basic income involving taxes and that money can go to people even who don't have jobs so that they can buy things in the marketplace and that can combat the centralization of wealth which often has a corrosive effect on democracies. People can commit crimes just to get a roof over their head in prison. People can make useful videos on YouTube for free that help people be more self-reliant. The balance between these five interwoven economies will shift with cultural changes and technological changes. The balance will reflect the outcome of historical conflicts, current political power distributions, cultural influences like religions or economic philosophies, or things like existing infrastructure. These may all be unique to specific countries or specific regions of the world. There are many examples of ongoing technological changes in our world today that will affect the balance between these five economies. Industrial productivity is rising exponentially through robotics and other automation, through better design, through the accumulation of infrastructure, and through better communications. Demand can rise more slowly than productivity as people decide that there is a law of diminishing returns for more material goods. Birth rates declining in industrialized countries, Computers and networks allow the almost free distribution of information to everybody on the planet. There's an increasing ability to treat atoms like they were bits. And the same sort of ability to print in two dimensions is rapidly expanding to being able to print in three dimensions. There's a widespread availability of smartphones, which are going to be discarded soon and essentially will be free. Solar panels are dropping in costs and so on. Yet, life is becoming more precarious for many in the middle class due to the effects of these same trends and how they affect employment and global security. Real wages in the USA have been flat for about 30 years. The rich-poor divide is growing in some areas. The value of most human labor is declining relative to automation, which is a problem in an exchange economy where if you don't have a job, you don't have a right to consume. Families that have become dependent on two incomes have twice the odds of having a big problem if someone gets sick or loses their job. In terms of national security, the same trends that allow increasing abundance also allow the creation of weapons of mass destruction more easily. And ironically, militaries are planning to use that kind of technology to fight the last century's wars that were about scarcity but they'll be doing it with the technologies of abundance. There are various ways to prop up an exchange-based economy through things like make work and artificial scarcity that can compensate for a while for limited demand and a breaking income through jobs link as industrial productivity continues to rise. Jane Jacobs might have called these transactions of decline. One way is endless advertising to keep people consuming stuff far beyond what they really need. Another way is through endless war that kills off workers and blows up things, creating new work to be done. There can be endless bureaucracy to waste time. There can be endless schooling to keep people out of the job market. There can be endless prisons. There can be increased sickness. There can be endless copyrights to prevent people from sharing freely, and so on. There are also positive alternatives to increase transactions of decline. There can be increased local subsistence, like if people are printing their own things in 3D printers, or growing their own local food with gardening robots. There can be local currencies and alternative energy and local get-togethers. There can be an increased gift economy, like through more internet access, or through shorter copyrights and patents, or through improving on free cycle practices.
perhaps with a global logistics network that ships unused goods around to people so that people don't have to store them locally. They can be more free and open source code and so on. The exchange economy can be softened with a basic income so people get money even though they don't have to work for it. They can be improved democratic resource-based planning that truly meets people's needs. Another way to look at the five economies and various related solutions is to build a simple chart where we compare exchange-based approaches with values-based approaches as well as individualistic approaches and communal approaches. Theft can occur in any of these different options, so it's sort of outside of this chart. In general, this chart shows that there are gray areas and overlaps between different things. Local subsistence is a little different from community-based subsistence. Uh, capitalism with a basic income still entails some planning and some values. So this isn't a perfect fit for all these items, but it gives you a broad framework in terms of thinking about what these different economies are like. Well, this is the last slide. So the question is, how will the balance shift in your current country of residence between these five interwoven economies? Remember, the current balance reflects unique things about your country. And future changes will also reflect where your country is now and how its technology and culture are going to change over time, as well as what other countries in the world are doing. So you can ask yourself, where's your country now on the five types of economies? Subsistence, gift, exchange, planned, and theft. And you can ask yourself, how do you want that balance to shift? Thank you for your time in listening to this and in thinking about these sorts of ideas.